about three or four years ago. Yes, I and I did. said, Bruce, you need to start taking longer vacations. We had a heart to heart, didn't we? Yes, we did. And uh, and I thank you for that. And my wife thanks you for that. Yeah, as well. I bet she uh, does. But Dean, it's never too late. I don't want anybody that's watching this to think, well, I'm already retired. I guess it's over. I can't no, no, do no. it. Ideally, we would start prior to retirement. For those that have recently retired and are starting to feel this anxiety, it's not too late. Starting your route to retirement. Welcome to the Guided Retirement Show. I'm your host, Dean Barber. I have a very special guest today, Bruce Godkey. Bruce joined me in the financial industry 18 years ago and is getting ready to embark upon an amazing journey. And as part of this amazing journey, Bruce is also launching a non-financial program for all of our clients. And what we're going to talk about today is the non-financial aspects of of retirement. I know you're going to enjoy my conversation with Bruce Godkey. All right, Bruce Godkey, thanks for being here on America's Wealth Management Show for episode 100. Can you believe that? It's been 100 episodes. Yeah, Crazy. And, and this is your first time on, but not your last. Not at all. Um, you're going to talk about something today that is important and exciting. You joined me 18 years ago and you helped create what is now Modern Wealth Management. And a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into that. And Bruce, right now, you're getting ready to embark on a new phase of life. Tell everybody sure, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So thank you, Dean. And uh, congratulations, 100 episodes. That's amazing. Yeah, it was 18 years ago that you and I uh, and a couple of other folks who started and built this into what it is today. But now I'm turning 65. And so the financial plan that you and I helped, we created many years ago is coming to fruition. And my wife, Heidi, and I are excited. Dean, we're, we're moving from the accumulation phase of our lives into the decumulation phase, meaning retirement. And how are, you, how are you kicking this off? Because this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. And it's something we've been planning for years. Dean, we love travel. We love learning about new cultures and... Well, we've signed up for a very, very exciting trip. We're leaving in mid-January. We don't get back until mid-July. And in between, we're going to be stopping in 96 different ports around the world, taking a worldwide cruise. Worldwide cruise. Well, congratulations, Thank Bruce. I'm, I'm super excited for you. And the topic today, I think, is as important as the financial side of things. Mm -hmm. And you and I have witnessed a lot of people as they enter into retirement, losing their sense of purpose, losing their identity. And while they may be financially secure, they find themselves like a ship without a rudder, right? Because they didn't take the time to think about the non-financial aspects of retirement. So while you're retiring as a financial advisor, once you get back from that cruise, you're going to be around here because you're going to be putting together a series mm -hmm. all about the non-financial aspects of retirement. So tell me more about what this is all about. Certainly. Well, let's just take, if you don't mind, back it up a step and say, why is this happening? Well, and and, and I'm a perfect case study. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been working for 50 years, Dean. 50 I would. Years. I would. Sometimes I would call you a workaholic and I'd tell you, Bruce, you need to take some time off. It's true. Um, I, I, and I'm not proud of it, but I am. And, and, and many of our clients are in a similar boat in that they love what they do. And, let, and let's just really think about it. What does work provide for us? Well, obviously income, but it's much more than that. When we're at work, we have a sense of community. I, I come here to the office and, I, and I, I usually take a tour around the building and I say hello to everybody. And then throughout the day, I have an opportunity to, to work with, with you and the rest of our colleagues here. And in, in many ways, you guys are my friends. Yep, It's my social outlook. So work provides not only money, but it provides community. It provides also a sense of identity. When I'm at a party, typically, Dean, if, if you were to meet me at a party, what would you say to me? Tell me about yourself, Bruce. Yeah. Well, what would I lead off with? You'd lead off with your career. I probably would. 
And, and that's not who you really are. And that's not what really you, who I am. It's what you do. It's what I do. But yet what I do and what I am have become intermeshed. And when people retire, they lose a lot of things. They lose money, as we said, from income. They lose community. They lose their sense of identity. And they also lose what I like to call their cadence of their life. You know that you need to get up at a certain time because you need to be at the office at a certain time during the day. Lunch is at a specific time because I have uh, meetings with clients early in the morning, throughout the morning, early afternoon, late afternoon. So lunch is at a set time and going home is at a certain time. It's a cadence to the life and it's something that I've become very comfortable with. And what study after study after study have shown is that people, they lose all of those things when they retire. As I said, there's been lots of different articles written about that and you and I have seen that many times with our clients. So it's true. What we have created here at Modern Wealth Management is incredible. We've helped people prepare for retirement financially, but avoid that you and I and, and others here at Modern Wealth are talking about avoid and something that we intend on filling is helping people fill those non-retirement goals. So let's talk about the uh, sense of community because that's a big deal. I watched um, as my mother lost her community um, and her, her community was her two sisters and her parents. Well, they've all passed, mm. right? And so now she, her, her community is her five children and grandchildren. Well, we're all busy. We all have things to do. Mm. And she has had to make an asserted effort to make additional friends and find additional activities and things that she can do. Otherwise, she sits in her home and is miserable. So well, how do you uh, find that sense of community, Bruce? Yeah. What, what's on your mind there? So, so Dean, what we're going to be rolling out will be ways that we can assist people. And, and Dean, we're branded this program or this process called Your Encore. And part of Your Encore is going to be just like you know, it, it, just think about a great concert that you've been to, where at the end of that concert, people beg the the performers to one more, one provide more, provide a little bit more. Yeah, and usually, what the performers provide the audience is their most favorite things, things that that touch them deeply, and that's what I would suggest to folks like your mom to first. Start with some introspection, right? Think about what have you been dreaming about doing your whole life, but you, you didn't have the time to do it. What activities were they that, that brought you joy? And what are your unique, unique skills that others can benefit from? So we're going to be helping folks figure that out and then encourage them to explore. Think about volunteer organizations that have in their charter things that are important to you. Remember, going back to that introspection, what's important to you? What are your unique skill sets? Maybe it's taking classes to learn more about it. And then set goals, specific goals. Remember the acronym SMART? Yep. Stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. But I think an important element that we're going to be incorporated into your encore is an accountability partner. We're going to be matching up clients or people, maybe they're not even clients, but they've heard about this program and they, 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 want, to get, they want to take part in it. And having that accountability partner know what your goals are and keep your feet to the fire to make Sounds sure you like do AA. it. It does sound like AA, but what, you know, we laugh about that and we say, well, that organization has been around forever. Why? Because it works. Well, you're in a unique situation to be able to, to provide this advice, Bruce, because it's something that you've witnessed and you've helped people with these things, uh, not just the financial side, but you've helped and, and counseled and coached through mm -hmm. the non-financial aspects of this. You know, it's interesting. I had a uh, conversation with a couple who I have been working with for some time, and they've had enough money 
to retire now for a few years and not just enough money to retire, but enough money that they could retire and have twice as much spendable income as they had while they're working. And yet there is a mental block there and, and they have kept working, especially the wife because her identity is completely her work Mm -hmm. and she doesn't know what it is that she's going to do every day if she doesn't have work to go to. Yeah. That and I told her, I said, you know, it's going to take time. It's not an immediate, okay, you know, you, you kind of have maybe have this honeymoon phase of the mm-hmm. first, you know, five to six months where you are super excited and you, you got a few things planned and you're going to go and do. And then as that starts to wane, you really have to do some deep thinking. You, you, you talked about that and yeah. really think about what's important in your life. Right. And it, it is frightening. Uh, you and I have sat across the desk from, from clients for years and years and years. And we saw them while they were working. They'd come in and they're, they were on fire. They were, they were just happy about life. And they were excited that they had finally attained their number. Right. right? Financial independence. They had achieved financial independence. And they thought that it would just come easily to them. But Dean, what happened? Three, six, nine months later, you'd, they'd be back in your office and you'd see a different person, wouldn't you? In some cases. But I think the people that were able to coach through this they have a different aspect of this. So I'm going to, yep. I'm going to go back all the way to 1989. Mm-hmm. And I was working at that time with an individual who's a doctor and he was thinking about retirement. So we're all the planning work. And in 1989, it was a lot different, the planning work, because we right. didn't have all the powerful computing systems that we have today mm-hmm. with all the work. And I said, okay, you're financially there. You can do it. And he's like, I'm scared. And I said, but you have enough money. He said, Dean, it's not the money. He said, I have a sense of purpose. People need me. Yes. And what's going to happen when people don't need me. And when I don't have that sense of purpose and sense of community and we had a lot of them talk about it. I was way younger then. I, I, I couldn't really relate. Mm-hmm. And all best I could do was go back to, you know, watching my grandfather mm-hmm. as he retired and, you know, talk about that. And I will never forget, it was about 18 months after this individual had retired. And we always talk about what he's doing, how's life, all this. And about 18 months in, He said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, I wish I would have done this sooner. I wish I would have done it sooner. I had lost the identity of who I was and what was really important in my life. Mm -hmm. And I had allowed my work to become my identity when that really wasn't who I was. And it took him 18 months to come to the realization that he wished he would have done it earlier. And so what you want to do is start coaching people on this a few years before they actually retire. That's right. That's exactly right. Ideally, we'd pick them up at 12, 18, 24 months prior to retirement and get folks to start thinking about post-retirement. That that won't be such a shock to them, a shock to their system, and they can start putting processes in place and start to understand what it is that they want to become once they are retired. And to your point, talking about that doctor client of yours, he didn't become that. That was always him. Right. But he had become this other person. The identity was solely that of being a a doctor. He needed to pull all of that off to really reveal who he really was. Right? Right. And it it took time. And that's the whole idea here. So... I'm very, very excited, and I'm, I'm also very, very thankful that Modern Wealth has given me this platform to be able to do this. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Bruce, as, as we think about moving into this phase of life, and I, and I call it every night's going to be Friday night for you from now on, right? Because you get to get up and do the things that you want to do 
because it's what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And it's no longer about the paycheck. So taking time in that 18 to 24 months leading up to retirement, I encourage people to take all of the vacation that you have. Don't take this stored up vacation and use that as like a little bonus when you're retired. Take that time now. Use up all those stored up vacation days to begin to un. Ravel yourself from the identity of you as a person at work and right. begin to discover, you know, what it is you want. So many people, Bruce, have not taken a full two week vacation, let alone a one month vacation or right. a six week vacation. They're they do the one week and you know, they're so stressed out in the first few days, finally middle of the vacation, they get to relax a little bit. And then two days before they got to go back to work, all of the anxiety comes back. If I got to go back, right. you didn't really get a chance to unwind and identify anything. That's correct. And so I, I agree with everything you're saying. And I'll be the first to admit, I was one that had a hard time vacationing, as you know. But you began to about three or four years ago. Yes, I, and I did. Said, Bruce, you need to start taking longer vacations. We had a heart to heart, didn't we? Yes, we did. And uh, and I thank you for that. And my wife thanks you for that. Yeah, as well. I bet she uh, does. But Dean, it's never too late. I don't want anybody that's watching this to think, well, I'm already retired. I guess it's over. I can't no, no, do no. it. Ideally, we would start prior to retirement for those that have recently retired and are starting to feel this anxiety, it's not too late. For those that have been retired for three, five, ten years, it's never too late. But it's imperative that you start now. You know, one of the things that we started doing years ago um, was a prioritization exercise Mm -hmm. with our clients and people who wanted to become clients. And that prioritization exercise was designed for the – for each spouse to be able to express what is the most important thing in their life. And we would go through a a series of 15 different sayings like, okay, Mm -hmm. what's important? Spending time with the people I care about, paying less in taxes, um, not being a burden to my loved ones, like things Mm -hmm. like this. And they would prioritize these different things And then we could have a deep conversation. So for the first time in almost every instance, it was an opportunity for each spouse to be able to be heard, not just by us as financial planners, but by their spouse. And how How many many times times did you see it was a surprise in the eye of the the, the other spouse? And they say, I never knew that about you. I never knew that that was important to you, right? And so- once each spouse was able to go through what was important to them, then we'd ask them, okay, you're moving into a phase of life where you're going to be with each other a lot more than you are when you're working. Let's take your priorities and your priorities and let's mesh these together so that we can come up with the priorities that are most important to you as a couple. And the aha moment and the self-realization of that exercise was the beginning point of really saying what's important. And you know what? Not one time, I I bet you in your meetings as well, not Mm -hmm. one time did anybody ever say that the most important thing in their life was money. Never. Never. It it, it never made the top five. What we came to the conclusion many times with clients was that money was just it was the fuel. It's the fuel that allows but you to do what to, you want to do. To go do the things that you want to do. But you have to identify what it is that you want to do. And we, we always used to say, don't retire from something, retire to something. That's right. And and we would hear many times, I'd like to spend more time with the, with the, with the, with the kids. Okay. And we'd say, well, what's preventing you from doing that? They're busy. Or they don't have the money to be able to travel. And so you and I and the other advisors, we would say, what would you think if you hosted a week at the beach? A and week in the mountains. A week in the mountains. Whatever is important to you and your family, how would you feel about that? And the answers we would get would be? Can I afford to do that? If well, it's important, well, this is a priority. If it's important, we need to figure out a way to make it happen, if it can right. happen, right? That's right. And and what we've learned and what we've seen 
And I've been practicing this now ever since my kids grew up and left the home is my wife and I, we plan a family vacation Mm -hmm. every year, but we plan that vacation two years in advance Mm -hmm. and we pay for everything. Yes. And all they got to do is get the time off of work and show up. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And when you give them two years in advance, they're going to show up. And, and Heidi and I have done the same thing, and it's been a great experience for everybody. I'll never forget, Bruce. I had a, a client. She lost her husband here probably four or five years ago, and she was in, and we were visiting, and we kind of went through you know, new priorities now that you're a widow, and what do you want to do? And she says, I really, she says, I just want to get the family together uh-huh. as often as I can. And she said, but we don't all live in the same city and everybody's got busy schedules. And so I did the whole thing. Let's, well, let's plan some trips. Mm-hmm. And um, 2022 happened. And we know that it was a tough year for the financial markets. Both stocks and bonds were negative. Crazy. Year. Worst we've seen, you know, for both of those in a long, long time. And she had planned a trip to the mountains mm-hmm. where she was hosting for everybody to get there and paying for skiing and all of this stuff. And uh, I think it was going to be a, a Christmas type of a time frame. Mm-hmm. She called me in November. She goes, Dean, can I still afford to do this? And I said, we built it into your plan. Yes, you can still afford to do it. She goes, thank God. And okay. the relief that she felt. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But, but you know, th- that's something that money can't buy. And, and our friend Ken Asawala, mm-hmm. he says that true wealth is something that money can't buy and death can't take away. So it's experiences. Absolutely. It's things that are important to you. And so that's what your program is going to be designed to help people think through these things and right. and really and then you'll be working with the CFPs Absolutely. to say, "Hey, this is something that's important to your client. Mm-hmm. Let's build this into their plan and make sure that it's something that they can do." Yeah, it's the it's it's integration and coordination of not only the financial, but as we're talking today, the non-financial aspects of, of retirement to make a full life. Yeah. You know, Bruce, I'm, I'm super proud of you for what you've accomplished here. I'm super excited for this next phase of your life. I'm jealous that you're doing that around the world cruise. Um, I talked to my wife about it. Uh, we went to a wedding uh, here recently, and you and I mm-hmm. talked about that, and you kind of told me the ports and things that you were going to go to. And so I asked my wife, I said, would you ever want to do that? Uh-huh. And she says, I don't know if I could be on a ship that long. So I need to work on her a little bit <laughs> <laughs> because I think it would be fabulous. Um, but obviously, you know, you, you have to be free from a job right. in order to do that. So I'm a few years away from doing that now. Um I am financially stable. I could retire tomorrow if I wanted to and sure. never do a, a lick of work again. But I actually I actually have achieved financial independence. And I, and I say that financial independence occurs when you're doing what you want to do and it's no longer about the paycheck. I'm doing what I want to do. This is your calling. I, I love what I do. Mm-hmm. I take a lot of vacations. I take ample time off. Mm-hmm. and But I'm passionate about it. And it it gives me purpose right now. And it, and it gives me great community. The world is a better place because of what you have done. You have created in your mind what you what is important to you, what's important to society, and have created this organization to be able to deliver that. But as you go through your life, Dean, you're going to change. Yeah. And there will come a day where you say, I needed to be doing something else. Yes. I want to end with a story. Please. Okay. So you know my good friend, Tony. Sure I do. So I actually got to know Tony about a decade ago, uh-huh. and he's not only become a very close personal friend, but a mentor. Mm-hmm. So a little bit about Tony's history. And by the way, Tony has been here on the Guided Retirement Show before. Um, Tony Lewis, if you look it up, you'll be able to find him. Um, Tony is... 77 years old. And Tony was the general who ran the entire air parade for Desert Storm. Mm -hmm. He retired as a three-star general. After being in the Air Force, he left there, 
became CEO of ConAgra, mm-hmm. retired from ConAgra at 55 with more money than he could ever spend in his life. And he found a sense of purpose in mentoring business owners and helping them find balance mm-hmm. between work and home yep. and helping them grow businesses. And today, Tony at 77 is as active as anybody that I know that's in their 50s. And he's as sharp mentally as anybody that I know in their 50s. So when we were going to do this, I texted Tony and I said, Tony, what words of wisdom would you have for people heading into retirement? And he says this, as a retiree, understand that your community, checkbook, the calendar, and the clock are constantly on your mind. One should consider partnering with a caring team who understands just how important these things are. Wow. That's brilliant. And, and I've got to say, I've, I admire Tony. You've introduced me, him to me years and years ago, and every time I see him here in the office, I don't see a 77-year-old man. No. I see somebody who's, who's, who has a gleam in his eye. Yeah. He's excited about life, and he gives back through so many different things. Yep. Part of it is mentoring you and the rest of us in this organization and, and dozens of other uh, organizations but he's also actively involved in the community in so many different ways. Uh, he's he's truly living his 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 best find, his best life. Well, and I think you know lessons that we've learned from people in the past allow us to be able to do the things that we do very mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. and have a great impact on people's lives. And you bringing this program to life in I'll call it your second phase of of work. It's going to be a joy for you. My encore, Dean. Yeah, your encore. It's going to be a joy for you. It's going to be something that you're passionate about and it's something that you're going to be able to help a lot of people with. So I'm excited for you. Well, thank you. I'm excited about it as well and really looking forward to uh, seeing this thing roll out over time and really achieving what I believe is now my calling. I agree with you, Bruce. Thank you. All right, you won't be on again for at least seven months. Right. I plan on having you back as soon as you get back from your around the world cruise, because I want to hear all about it. And I know all of our listeners and viewers here on the guided retirement show are going to want to hear about it as well. We'll try to get some videos, uh, some, some, some cameras, some pictures and things like that from some of the places you went. You can tell some stories about that. I will be, I will be uh, providing those along the way uh, back to uh, the, the, the whole group here. And uh, I look forward to sharing all the experiences, not only the places that I've been, but more importantly, the people that I'm going to meet along the way. Good for you, Bruce. Thanks for being here. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. (laughs) Thanks again for joining me here on the Guided Retirement Show. I hope that you are as excited for Bruce's next phase of life as I am. I know there are many of you out there who want to get to that point where you can find that financial independence and that purpose in life. We would love here at Modern Wealth Management to be your guide on that journey. Starting your route to retirement. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to leave a comment and share this episode with your friends. Investment advisory services offered through Modern Wealth Management, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor.